So about four years ago, we put up one of those above ground pools, but we weren't planning on keeping it up all year round. So in the fall time, we convert that dead space to a fire pit area. This year, we're gonna show you exactly how to put up one of those poles if you've never done it before, thanks to Leslie's. You ready to get started, babe? Let's do that. Let's do it. What do we usually start with? Well, so first things first, we have to get the gravel out of here. Then we do sand. <laughs> Oh my God. We have to get rid of all this crushed granite that's in here and then level this back out. Now, since we've used this space over the past four years, my ground is already pretty much level. Though, once I rake up all the crushed granite and get rid of that, which we end up putting in the back flower beds um, and repurposing, I still need a little bit of leveling. So that's where we add play sand. The play sand is also gonna help to soften the footbed part of the pool. I use a heavy duty bristle brush to spread the sand out evenly across the surface and use the back of the broom to fill for any high spots that need more leveling. Next, I add my pool pad. Now I have two this year because I'm reusing the one from last year. A pool pad simply is gonna keep you from feeling any kind of sharp objects that may be left over or weeds from growing through. As you can see, I've got two layers of this pool padding that we put down. I used these blocks that I used for the fire pit earlier to help me stretch that out. After leaving that overnight, all the wrinkles are gone, so it's perfectly flat. We're ready to start putting the pool up. Huge shout out to Leslie's for sending us this pool so we can show you guys exactly how to put it together. To order the pool, we just went to lesliespool.com, picked out the pool we wanted, and they shipped it right to us and put it in our backyard. All we needed to do was put it together. Here's a list of the parts. You have a pump and the hoses, the T-connectors and pins, the top rail, which attaches to the T-connectors to form the top ring of the pool, the legs, which are the longer pieces here, the feet for the legs, and then all the parts for the ladder. The first step to assembly is to lay the pool out and orient it in the direction that you want. I choose to have the pump towards the back of our yard. Then you'll take the top rail and the T-connectors to start assembling the outer ring of the pool. First, take your top rails and slip that through the opening at the top part of the pool here. Then you're going to take the T connector and make sure that that curve faces the inner part of the pool. Once they're connected, you're going to make sure those holes line up and use the pins to connect the pieces. Now it has a rubber washer that you have to slip over the pin first. It looks like a little top hat. Once you insert that into the hole, you should hear a click and that means that the piece is firmly in place. Just like this, it'll just snap in. And once the top ring is assembled, you can add the feet to the legs. The feet have sort of an oval shape, but you'll notice one side is a little bit flatter. That's the side that's gonna face the pool. Line it up where the flat part is where this little knob is because that knob is going to connect, right, with this T-joint that will hold the outer ring of the pool up. And if you have like a, you know, piece of stone or concrete or something like that, just kind of tap it in. Once you have all the feet added to the legs, go ahead and start laying the legs out where the T-connectors are all the way around the pool. To attach the legs, make sure that you put the leg through this vinyl band that goes around the outside part of the pool before you connect it to the top ring. Insert the top part of the leg into the T-connector, press down on the pin in the back of the leg, and make sure it snaps in place. From there, you're gonna do that with every single leg all the way around the pool. One other good rule of thumb is to make sure that the feet of the legs are on some sort of brick or stone, that way they don't sink into the ground. Now before you can fill the pool with water, you need to go ahead and assemble the ladder. It's pretty easy, you have an A and a B side on each side of the ladder, and on the step, a corresponding A and B. Take these connectors and lock them into place on the bottom part of the ladder, and then slide on the step. They should fit into the grooves that you see on the inside part of the step there. It may be a tight fit, but you're going to squeeze that down and make sure it locks in place and continue doing that with each step as you go up. Once the two sides of the ladder are completed, go ahead and add the top handrails and supports. After the ladder is assembled, go ahead and add it into the pool, put your hose in, and now we add water. As the pool starts to fill up, you're gonna to wanna to spread the floor out. I like to use my heels and walk around the edge to make sure there's no creases in the bottom of the pool. And while the pool fills up, you can get started on installing the pump. I like to set the pump on a paved stone so that it has a firm foundation to sit on. There are four hoses provided with the kit. The two smaller ones are your inlet hoses. Attach those to the T-connector with provided clamps and make sure they're tightened tight enough so that you don't have any leaks. 
Next, attach the inlets to the inside part of the pool. You'll see on the outside where the hoses attach, it'll be marked clearly with the letter B there. Use the provided clamps to make sure that those are on tight as well and you don't have any leaks there where your inlets are. From there, you'll take one of the larger hoses, connect one end to the bottom of the T-connector and the other end to the part of the pump marked with the letter B. Connect the other hose to the side marked with the letter A, which will be your outlet. Then connect the outlet valve to the other end of the hose. Next, install the outlet to the inside part of the pool, making sure that that rubber O-ring is on the inside. Make sure the outlet is on as tight as you can get it and then install the valve. that on and hand tighten it. The outlet valve has a lock and unlock position. Make sure when the pump's in use, it's unlocked. And when you're changing the filter, that it's in the locked position so water doesn't flow back out and into the pump. And here's how the system will look when it's finished. You'll have one hose going to the A side, that'll be your outlet, and the other hose going to your inlets, that'll be the B side. The pump that comes with this pool uses a number three or an A style cartridge filter. In order to change it, make sure you turn the pump off, shut the valve, then loosen up the clamps and pull out the inlets. Clean off any debris that may be on the inlets and then install the stopper so that no water comes through the hoses. Next, unscrew the air release from the top of the pump slightly so that you see water flowing through. That'll release the pressure from the pump system and make it easier to remove that top ring. Then take off the lid and make sure that O-ring stays with the lid so that when you put it back on you don't have any leaks and remove the dirty cartridge. These cartridges are reusable, so you can wash it out with a garden hose, use it again later, or install a new cartridge. I also like to empty the dirty water from the pump before I install the clean cartridge. From here, the process is reversed. Put the lid back on, make sure the O-ring is in place, and then screw down the top ring. Next, open up the outlet valve, remove the stoppers, and tighten down the air release valve when you see water flowing through it. Put the inlets back in, tighten the clamps down, and then turn the pump back on and you're good to go. This really is a convertible outdoor living space if there ever was one. During the summertime, we put our 18-foot round pool up to beat the Texas heat and take it down during the fall so we can relax around a cozy fire pit. I really hope you found this video informative, and if you did, please remember to leave us a like and a follow. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Have a good one.